Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Böhm, Product Manager for the MicroXRF on SEM source and the WDS and uh, in this video we want to demonstrate how to set up and how to run a MicroXRF measurement uh, on a selected sample and this is my colleague Andrew Menzies, he's our um, yeah, senior application scientist for geology and mining and he will um, process the data after we collect the XRF map and he will also show you or discuss the synergies and differences between an EBIM excited spectra and a micro XRF excited spectra. So let's get started. I will briefly go over and discuss our microscope or more our analytical equipment on the microscope. That is a Hitachi SEM. It's an SU5000. So normally when you work on that uh, or yeah, on any kind of SEM, you have your electron beam which comes out here of the objective lens that impines on the sample and due to the interaction of the electron beam with the sample um, x-rays will be produced. These x-rays will be measured by existing EDS detector which you can see here on the left hand side so that's a more, more or less the basic setup. Here on the back you can see also our WDS installed and what you see here on the right hand side is our micro XRF source so that's a photon source and here what we are doing here we excite samples directly with x-rays so this technique is called um, x-ray fluorescent spectrometry and um, since um, yeah xrf don't come with a specific spatial resolution we use uh, polycapillary optics to focus our x-rays down to a spot size of around 30 microns and when a x-ray tube works in combination with a focusing optic this technique is called micro x-ray fluorescence so by adding this uh, micro xrf source you convert your SEM in a dual beam system. So you have your electron beam over here and you have your um, X-ray beam over here. The micro XRF can be installed to almost every inclined SEM port and now we can open the specimen chamber. So the uh, chamber is already vented and then we can take a look on the polycapillary optic. So I open the door. And what you see over here is the uh, polycapillary optic. So that means the whole source, the X-ray tube and the optic is aligned to a specific working distance of your EDS uh, detector. So in this case, it's aligned to 10 millimeters. That will be done uh, during installation. But uh, I will also show you how to um, check um, the position of the X-ray spot to make sure that the X-ray spot uh, exactly hits the center of the electron beam. For To do that we have here two screws for X and Y direction. Um, another thing is that uh, X-ray optic is, is fixed in space so it cannot raster as an E-beam can do. So and when we come into the mapping into mapping. Uh, that means uh, we need to move the sample under the X-ray optic. Um, to make sure that we can acquire fast X-ray elemental mappings, we have um, a special stage inside, which is called rapid stage, which you can see over here. This stage um, um, comes with two axes, an X and Y axis, and it can scan areas um, of 50 by 50 millimeter directly on the fly. That means uh, we don't use a um, yeah, um, point to point approach. In that case, the uh, rapid stage moves continuously, or we can say, or we say, um, we can acquire on the fly measurements. That stage comes with a um, specific dovetail adapter. So here that's a Dovetail adapter for the um, Hitachi, so you, it's an easy plug and play solution. You can slide it in or slide it out, whatever you want. And it comes also, uh, it has only one plug which will connect it with a vacuum feed through. So I will co disconnect the plug over here. 
and then I can slide the rapid stage out because now I want to prepare uh, a sample for our demo scan so for that I will close the specimen chamber for now before I will show the sample prep work, here is um, a list of benefits or of differences to traditional e-beam analysis. First of all, when we look here at the image on the left-hand side, so that is um, yeah, exactly that setup what we see here on the SEM. We have our e-beam um, coming perpendicular. Then we have our EDS detector and we have our X-ray beam. You can see also here that, uh, yeah, that circle that um, represents the interaction volume. So what you see, the X-rays, that is not a surface sensitive technique. So um, your um, interaction volume is um, much higher. So we are talking about, we have a spot size, so the, or the polycapillary optics comes with a spot size of around uh, 35 micrometers, but your interaction volume it's much greater than that. So that means uh, depending on your sample and your sample matrix, you reach uh, different depth and penetration. Uh, for the um, mapping, when we come into mapping, uh, we have mentioned or we have discussed that uh, um, X-rays is the X-ray optic is fixed in space and cannot raster. That's why we use the rapid stage to acquire fast X-ray elemental mappings. Um, the major benefits or the differences to traditional e-beam analysis is that um, X-rays, which comes from X-ray tube, um, gives you much lower limits of detection. So with, uh, by adding a micro XRF source, you have the possibility to see or to reach detection limits down to even 10 ppm. That makes it easier to see trace elements, which will be otherwise must in the loss in the which will be otherwise lost in the background of your e-beam. Um, the second advantage is that you can excite high energy X-ray lines. We have the full spectrum range up to 40 keV. So uh, compared to e-beam analysis where your acceleration voltage needs to be two or three times higher than a specific element, we can uh, we can have to set the X-ray tube to 50 kV and by setting the X-ray tube to 50 kV we can excite all the, um, the, the full spectrum range from the low elements up to 40 kV. Um, the X-rays also penetrates deeper into your sample so um, that means we can see a hidden structure which are located underneath the surface. Um, and by the way, that is also um, yeah, a, a reason or a benefit why we use that tool for thin film thickness analysis on an SEM. Um, that um, X-rays doesn't charge your sample. So for normal X-ray fluorescence analysis, you don't need to uh, charge your samples. So the sample, the sample prep work is much easier. So um, and there is not, uh, that means the surface doesn't need to be polished that nicely. It's, uh, it's enough as long as you have a flat surface. Um, the, it's a small spot analysis. So when we're talking about spot sizes of 30 micrometers, it's an ideal tool for micro scale measurement over centimeter. That's what uh, that is what we are um, presenting in our following example or our following sample. And that is also an ideal tool since the, um, the X-rays doesn't charge your sample. You can also use it for low QV or beam sensitive applications. And also a pre uh, an ideal pre-screening school to make hotspots of trace elements visible. Will, uh, and these locations can be further analyze by using the electron beam. And now let's come to our sample. Uh, oh, I have prepared um, two samples. The first sample which we have here is a granite sample. It has a size of around 25, uh, 25 by 25 millimeters. So in this sample we have a bunch of elements. We have light elements, we have heavy elements, 
and we have and some of them also uh, in traces and trace levels and it's an ideal um, sample to explain or to discuss the synergies and differences between um, e-beam and x-ray excited spectra. So what I will do, I will place um, that sample here on the rapid stage. Um, I, focus, I prepared here in the middle and try to prepared um, you yeah, almost parallel to the positioners that is easier for the um, rotation calibration afterwards and I also have a second sample with me that is a simple uncoated glass and on that sample I want to show you how you can check the alignment to make sure that the x-ray is really in the center of your um, electron beam because on that sample you can easily make the x-ray spot visible. So I will place it here next to the granite sample so both samples have approximately the same height that makes it easier to focus the samples in the SEM. Okay, now I want to put the rapid stage inside the chamber. Ah, no, before we do that I need to measure the height of the sample because that's a um, specially touchy rule. So here I have a height checker, and then I check, so we are talking about roughly 50 millimeters and since we want to map the whole, the whole sample, um, I want to make a photograph of that sample at first, that makes it easier for me to find the um, center position of the granite sample. So, and then I can go to my SEM software. I can click on specimen settings. I choose the, yeah, the diameter of the sample holder. It's the 51 and yeah, 51 is okay, I think. And then we can start creating the movie. Ah, here I can define the area. Okay, then I can click on set. Then I will take the stage. And we'll plug the stage inside the specimen chamber. So you see here, it comes with a simple plug which will be, will be connected to the vacuum feed through. So I slide the stage in. Then I connect the plug. So. Then I need to check if you are really on the correct height. And once I'm ready with that, I can click on next. And now the chamber will be evacuated. Now that we have um, evacuated the specimen chamber, we can um, yeah, go to our Esprit software. What you see over here, we have the um, hardware device boxes for the microscope, for our micro XRF source, and also for the rapid stage. So you can simply activate or deactivate the specific hardware with a simple mouse click. Here, um, now I want to set 
the turn on the X-ray tube. So you have two possibilities. One possibility is to set the X-ray tube in standby. That means the um, X-ray tube will be run at uh, 20 kV and 100 microns. This is um, yeah, a recommended setting when the X-ray tube was longer time not in use to um, set it to standby at first, wait for uh, roughly 30 seconds and then you can um, operate the tube in maximum conditions. So um, now let's go to our um, SEM screen or our SEM software. The first is, so um, we have vacuum on the chamber, so I can go to the electron beam workspace. Um, the first is that we, um, the first sample I want to measure is the glass sample, as mentioned beforehand. That is an uncoated glass. Uh, to avoid any charging effects on here, I will accelerate the sample with um, low voltage. So I run the electron beam at 3 kW with a um, yeah, small spot intensity. So then I can click on start. So the um, the Hitachi SEM sets uh, the yeah the Z value for the stage will be set to five millimeters per default, but we working at ten millimeter working distance, so I change the Z to ten. Then we can come back to our photograph of the sample. So that's the granite sample. Here is the glass sample. So I go here. On the glass, the SEM stage moves to the glass sample, and now we focus the glass sample in 10 millimeters to 10 millimeters. So I press auto contrast brightness, and now I need to see to find a specific location where we have a contrast. So, for example, that looks good because here we have a small scratch. So oh, something like that. As mentioned before, the optic is um, fixed in space and it will is aligned to 10 millimeters. So now we have a um, focus the sample at 9.1. So that means we need to move with the sample uh, 0 0.9 millimeters down. So I set it to yeah, roughly 10.8 millimeters. And let's see what's happened then. So, okay, one millimeter higher. So, something like that. And then we can go to our Esprit software. So now we have focused the glass sample at 10 millimeters. And now we want to check if our X-ray spot is really in the center of the electron beam. So what I did, I select, uh, go to minimum magnification in the SEM image. I select, I, um, yeah, set the X-ray tube to maximum conditions, 50 kV is 600. I activate both sources to make sure that the electron beam will be not blanked in the um, <coughs> uh, SEM. And once I click on preview, uh, I expect to see the X-ray spot uh, on the SE image. So let's click on preview, start a micro XF measurement. 
Ah, so what we see here, we see nothing. That is because our X-ray source is still retracted, as mentioned beforehand. Uh, um, um, yeah, the VDS and uh, the VDS, the um, the, um, the working distance for that FEM will be set to five millimeters per default, and uh, that and in five millimeters um, the SEM stage with a sample will interfere with the optic. That's why we have retract the optic or the source. So I need to retract the optic. So here we have a linear stage. And on the back, you cannot see there is a scale which gives you the measuring position. So now the optic is in a working position and I will click on preview. And what we see here is our X-ray spot which is almost in the center of the electron beam. So, um, and for example, you can, um, yeah, when we now have a look at the XRF source, we have here two alignment screws for X and Y. And once you turn these screws, you can see um, how the X-ray spot is moving. So when we look here and I turn That screw, you see here that we can, um, yeah, move the X-ray spot to the left or to the right, and you can easily put it in the center of the crosshair. Um, so that's a nice effect that is um, generated by an by a photo effect, which makes the X-ray spot visible. So as you see, as we turn on this, um, the the um, the X-ray source, the yeah, spot was almost in the middle, but we recommend to check that the spot is really in the middle um, because uh, even especially on older SEMs, it can happen if you're working with different magnifications and the objective lenses are not well aligned, it can happen that you have a small misalignment. You don't need a uncoated glass, you can also put a simple piece of paper that you have the same effect, but here I want to sh uh, demonstrate it on the glass sample. Okay, now we are ready with that and we are sure that the X-ray spot is exactly at the center of the electron beam. We can stop the measurement and then we can go to our granite sample. So they are roughly at the same height, but not exactly. So I move here into the center. Say auto contrast and brightness. And now I need to focus that sample as well. Click on focus. So you see here, the image is sharp at around 11 millimeters. So we need to go move with the stage one millimeter higher. So I say 9.7. And now we have focused our granite sample at 10.0 um, millimeters, and now we are ready to do our micro XRF and E beam work. Now that we focus our sample in the um, yeah at 10 millimeters, and we find our center position, we can have a quick comparison of um, an e-beam and a micro XF excited spectra. So for doing that here we can see the x-ray tube is activated. Uh, we have set it to a maximum condition which means 50 kV and 600 micrograms. In that case since our e-beam works at 3 kV we can keep the microscope on and we don't want to quantify that data. So I select an um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, 30 um, seconds real time click on acquire 
then the software tells you, yeah, okay, uh, in this case, we gathering uh, micro XF and eBeam data together. It's not possible in that case. We can ignore it for now. Click on yes. Then the X-ray shutter is open. And then we see here our micro XF spectra. I like it more to have it in red for the micro XRF. And then we can look for some specific elements uh, finder we have here potassium that is silicon and that should be aluminum right uh, can set it here to channel and we have also here some other candidates like rubidium and what's that we have strontium here maybe a tiny peak of zirconium so, and then we doing a, an electron beam map. To do that, I will change the acceleration voltage to 20 kV for the electron beam, say 20, say set. So it takes a little bit time. And for this measurement, I will deactivate the X-ray source. So I simply click here on the microscope. Then you can see here that the uh, um, X-ray tube is grayed out. So I need to make, say, auto contrast brightness. And then we can, we have a, around 8.5 kilo CPS. It's okay for now. Check the real time. Yeah, 30 seconds. I repeat the measurement by using the E-beam and then I change it to blue, so that was XRF, and that is our our EDS data. Let's wait once the measurement is finished. Okay, and then we can have a quick look at the spectra. So we see here our aluminum, our silicon. We have here our potassium. And what you can see here, the differences are from um, E-beam and micro XF excited spectra. So for the E-beam, it drops down, we accelerate with 20 kV, so we have an, uh, we can excite all the elements which are here um, <clears throat> between, we can excite the light elements and it goes, but then it drops down at around eight um, kV for the micro XRF, the most, um, yeah, the highest cross section is uh, for the mid and heavy element lines. So what you see here is a crossover of both techniques so with the electron beam we have a higher intensity profile for aluminum for silicon we have um, a higher count rate um, yeah, or stronger peak coming from the micro xf and when we go to um, higher intensities or higher x-ray lines we can see here with the micro xf that we can clearly um, yeah see peaks uh, heavy K-line peaks, which are around 15, or we can also go to even 25 or 30 kilo CPS um, kV. But this um, yeah, will be discussed uh, later on once we have our map data ready. So now we uh, we can go to um, yeah to set up the sample for an XRF map. So we we change here to our mapping workspace and. Yeah, and for that we need to activate the tube and then we have here our, um, we can, 
first of all, we can define the number of pixels, so um, or the number of data points, how many data points per frame we want to measure. So we can either um, go down to 50 um, data points per frame, or we can have also measure with 800 or 600 data points per frame so that uh, the more number of data points you have your spatial resolution will be increased but that also results in a, a much uh, higher or um, yeah, much longer acquisition time. So here in that case we decided to scan the sample with 300 pixels that is more than enough for that. Um, we can capture a first image then we know that our sample has a dimension of around uh, 25 by 25 millimeters so we have to align our scanning area so i activate here image extension and then i increase the numbers of frames so uh, for example we have here 30 millimeters by nine millimeters yeah let's keep it in that way and then i can click on capture and what's happened then is that the sem stage moves in the upper left corner and collects all the image tiles Okay, once our image tiles are collected, uh, we can now set up our um, map area, so our, our, or our scan area, which area we want to, to map. So at first we can go to the rapid stage and define the speed of the stage. So we can either map very slow or up to a speed of four millimeters per second. If you scan with four millimeter per second, um, yeah, it saves a lot of acquisition time, but um you will have uh, yeah a uh, worth of statistics so if you are uh, decreasing your mapping speed you have a much better statistics so for now we um, scan our sample with 700 micrometers per second so that means our stage moves continuously with that um, speed and collects the x-ray map data line by line so and that um yeah, results in a frame time of approximately uh, 22 minutes. So I can click on acquire, um, on apply. Mm -hmm. Then I can go to my map area. I select variable and then I have here that frame. And then, for, for example, we can uh, decide to map that map area. Then I can pre-select an element, for example, copper and silicon. And once I'm ready with that, I deactivate the microscope because we want to ensure that we have pure um, XRF data. Select the tube, then the E-beam is deactivated. And once I press acquire, the electron beam will be blanked. And the only signal which we now have in the chamber is that signal which comes from the micro XRF tube. And once I start the measurement, you see here the coordinates for the rapid stage will be changed. So the rapid stage moves here in that um, upper left corner and collects the X-ray map data line by line. Once our micro XRF map is finished, we can go over here to that button and say map data save. And I call it one granite underline XRF. Click on save. So the whole map will be saved as a hypermap file. So hypermap means that for every position, um, every spectra and all the images will be saved, which allows a, a post-processing post of the data after saving the file. And with that, I will hand over to my colleague, Andrew Mancis, and he will discuss with you what are the benefits of the micro XRF that you can see in that map and will also process the data. Thank you.